Today, we're out driving around looking for pronghorn with Jesse DeVoe. He's currently working on a statewide research project here in Montana looking at the movements of pronghorn. I used to work for Jesse back in the day when he was getting his master's degree researching mountain goats and bighorn sheep. Since then, our career paths have diverged a bit, but this is a great opportunity to catch up and see what he's got going on now. We've done three collar events here in the Madison. Like this year or in the last, yeah, like? Then the last three years. Three so years, we, okay. Yeah, captured during the winter, and the Madison Valley was actually the first place that we captured pronghorn. And then the next year, we expanded the project to include a whole bunch of other populations. A few weeks back, I got to tag along and watch as they put out the last batch of GPS collars for the year. And I have to say, it's a pretty cool process to witness. The helicopter crew from Quicksilver Air are crazy efficient. These guys have been catching all sorts of wildlife across Montana for the last couple of months. With the assistance of a spotter plane, they spot groups of pronghorn that they want to target. The helicopter sweeps in, flanking the herd, and the crew does what they do best. Pronghorn are capable of running 60 miles per hour, so it's pretty crazy to watch them haul ass through the sagebrush trying to escape. Fortunately for the researchers, but unfortunately for the pronghorn, this is no match for a helicopter. It was very interesting watching this crew work. They had the pilot, the net gunner, and the mugger. The mugger is the guy responsible for jumping out, removing the net, and restraining the animal. Also in the helicopter is wildlife biologist Kelly Prophet. She works up the animals, collecting blood, nasal swabs, and fecal samples, and doing ultrasounds. This data will be used for a variety of things to help them monitor the population. Then they attach a GPS collar. This, of course, provides them with a ton of location data, which will be used to learn about so many cool things. Now with doe pronghorn collared all around the state, Jesse can just sit back and collect boatloads of data remotely. Having these live feed GPS collars is still a fairly new thing in wildlife research. It's pretty amazing how quickly they can learn about the movements of these pronghorn. I just upload the data and I can look directly at it and I can immediately see things. And I'm not the only one looking at this data. I share this information with all the local biologists to those areas. And they're also looking at the data and seeing that these animals are either like completely entrapped in a fenced area. It might be someone's private parcel that has just a fence all the way around it. And you can see like they're just moving in this thing that eventually with enough dots filling it in, it looks like the exact shape of that parcel. Um, so we have examples of those. We've had animals that are migrating in the spring to the south and then they kind of get funneled to a point and we've seen the locations come to a point and stop and then they reverse and go back to the to the north and then they make another route around and so we look at that and we scratch our heads and say well there's obviously something going on there. To visually see like the Madison River coming in and angling in from the northwest and kind of cutting this way and then we have the highway behind us that's creating this like perfect funnel and they had the woven wire fence across here and, and yeah. so that woven wire fence like they used to have that for sheep right and yeah. it was just it, four inch squares or something of just like it's impenetrable well, you can't fit through you're right there's a, the only way through is over basically yep yeah. the only way is over and they're about I don't know, chest height or something, maybe lower. And usually it's not just the woven wire, there's barbed wire above that usually. So for pronghorn, that's that's the worst. I guess and the antelope don't generally, they don't generally jump, right? <laughs> so that's the thing with pronghorn is, I mean, we're so used to watching deer and elk just clear these fences, no problem, but pronghorn don't have a proclivity to jump. They were evolved on these big open landscapes where they never had to jump. Um, so they go under things. And if they can't go under them, they can, yeah, spend a lot of time trying to 
figure out how to find a hole or they just get trapped. So gotcha. that's the idea of these larger gaps under, under them. And there's a lot of anecdotal work and as well as some uh, studies that have been done to try to figure out like the optimal bottom wire height. And it, it ranges between 16 and 18 inches. The top wire is supposed to be not any higher than 42 inches. 42. Uh, 40 to 42. So, so yeah, we're at like 37 or something 37. right here. <laughs> Pronghorn can jump and they will, they will if it's low enough. If we have a heavy snow year, the snow is going to be up to here. They're not going to be able to get under that. Gotcha. So then they could still potentially jump over. Right. And that's so. And then they found that this obviously is plenty to still keep the cattle cattle contained. Yeah, that's right. the idea. Yep. Yeah, these these fences are still like still keep the cattle in. Super cool because this is a very obvious management implication, like relatively easy to do. Yeah. And that's what Randy signed us, all of his employees, including me, up to go help with a fence project this, yeah. this summer. So I'm excited that's like yeah. coming up in the future. We're going to yeah. go mod. I don't know if we're going to modify, tear out, change what, what we're yeah. going to do, but it's, yeah, I'm excited. It's, yeah. it's something like on the ground, like you can see the immediate impact. I just think it's so cool just that we have this species that is, it's really an ancient species here. They've been evolving on this landscape for two and a half to three million years compared to elk and deer. Elk and deer haven't been on this continent for that long. And there used to be upwards of like 12 or 15 different species of pronghorn in North America. And they all had totally different horn patterns and stuff, crazy horns, but yeah. So there's there's been a long history of pronghorn um, evolution on this continent and all those other species died out except for this one it's yeah. the, the last remaining yeah. species which is it, it's it's amazing and so i don't know it just makes them in a way like that much more special right to keep them around and and the fact that they can live out on these like flat prairie lands is have a totally different strategy for surviving than yep. a lot of the other ungulates, that they can still run way faster than any of the predators that mm -hmm. are around. I mean, there used to be a uh, North American cheetah, um, and so they suspect that that's the reason that yeah. pronghorn can run that fast, because they had to, like, they had a, a, an arms race or whatever with, with the cheetah. So once the cheetah went extinct, there was nothing nothing left but they still were left with that vestigial trait of being able to run really fast and so it's really interesting and there, I just think there's a lot of things about the animal that were evolved to be able to take advantage of these big landscapes be able to see far see predators from a really long distance stay in the open and they've seen a lot over the millions of years they've been here and now humans the next big thing, the next big selection force for them, where we have these things on the landscape that they have no familiarity with right. whatsoever. Um, and they're just getting accustomed to that. <laughs> I love learning about wildlife and seeing all the cool research that goes on. But this project in particular is just incredible to me. Having data near real time and being able to quickly implement management that benefits the animals is awesome. I'm excited to get out on the ground this summer and do some manual labor. We're going to get the whole Fresh Tracks crew out here to work on some fences and improve some corridors. Should be a good time.